destroyed. You know, okay. How do I do it in a way that doesn't evoke a defensive reaction? It's a, it's a need I have that mm. in, involves some sort of a criticism. How do I do it in a way that doesn't create a defensive reaction? Well, it's important to understand that if you're going to just criticize somebody, everybody gets defensive when they criticize. Mm -hmm. If you instead ask a question so you evoke some response which is non-critical, then you have dialogue. That's the concept, getting dialogue. So if you're with a woman and you feel that she's doing X, whatever X might be, and she's getting angry at you for something, you could say, what's provoking this anger? Mm -hmm. What are you really feeling angry about? Why are you getting angry with me? And that provokes conversation. You know, before you mentioned this concept of men feeling that they need to be rocks and then they're also uncomfortable about showing emotion. Why is that uncomfortable to feel that a man can be supportive, can be strong, can have a great relationship, on the job, be important on the job, and, be a and not be able to come home and be emotionally invested in his wife and his children. I think that's a lot of nonsense that's being perpetrated okay, I'm to gonna, men. I'm going to quote from the mm -hmm. Reader's Digest article one more time. This is a psychiatrist who says, a man, and I, again, I, I don't think I'm the only man who feels this way. A man knows he's supposed to take a bullet for his family. A man knows he's supposed to fix whatever gets broken. Now, if that's what men, and you know what, but I don't that's think... That's not a true statement. But, but, so the question is, how did men get to Women feel that way? Women fix more than men do. So men feeling that, that they need to fix things, you think, is not an accurate... They may feel that way, but who takes care of the children most of the time? So therefore, when we're talking about family issues, women are often feeling the burden of that responsibility and then a man comes home and complains that he has to take care of Johnny. What's wrong with him relating to his wife and recognizing that what she's saying is, I want us to share this and I do want you to go to work because that should be your passion. Why is work uh, an obligation? Why is it something, you see that's the problem in this country. Most people do things that they don't want to do. If they had a passion for their job, if they had a passion yeah. for life, no. then they wouldn't think that's that. Right. Most people do things they don't want to do. Do you think security. they believe they don't want to do? Well, that may be true that's also. That's the reframing. But that's a problem. To... So therefore, you have an angry man coming home, and now he has demands placed upon him by a wife, and that's also an issue. So we mm -hmm. have to look at the sociological issues as well as the family dynamic. Mm -hmm. And if you are happy in what you're doing, why is that inc incongruent for you to be happy, a rock uh, on your job, and being... come home and be able to be an emotionally invested individual? Because if a woman is, if a woman is counting on you to be to provide a certain stability, it, you will not want to jeopardize your relationship by showing instability. I'm going to try a little experiment. Just excuse me, just one second. Mm -hmm. well, while you're here, Dr. Gersh, uh, if you, with your permission, let me just do a little experiment. Uh, can I can I get this camera on me? I want to talk to to. There are single women out there. I know you're watching, and I'm a single man. Okay, I want to talk to you because we may get together. I promise you. I promise. I won't ever fix a thing. Uh, if it breaks, I'm not going to fix it. It will. It'll stay broken. And if something of mine breaks, I'm going to give it to you. You can repair it. I'll share with you. I'll, we'll talk. But I promise to fix nothing. <laughs> now, I'm betting the men's net phones are not going to be ringing off the hook with women who say, that's my idea of a guy I want of me. It's not true. Women do expect men to repair things, to fix things, to get things accomplished. And that's fine. But they, you mentioned to me something in an interview we did before the show that women often get their emotional intimacy from their girlfriends because if they're not counting on their girlfriends for security, it's easier for her to open up emotionally than it is for him if he feels she's depending on him. It's true, but that doesn't mean it can be changed. What you're saying has truth. But what I am saying is that when men come into my office, in fact, I, I once did some research just to see the demographics of my practice, and a lot of people will say, I'm sure the, uh, off the cuff they'd say most, most uh, patients are women, when in fact, I saw that 50% of my practice was men. And why is that? Because when men come into an office like mine and feel safe, they start to become emotional and they start to feel. And when I have couples in my office and I help men understand that it's not about that you can't fix. Again, what you're doing is you're isolating. You're saying men, women want men to fix. That's absolutely true. But what we fix and what we can also relate to are two disparate notions. It doesn't have to be that if we fix, we can't also relate. All right. I'd like to give Dr. Schiffler a chance to talk about, I know you have ideas about nonviolent communication, and maybe you could explain what that is in the context of a relationship, because I think what often happens, and the reason intimacy doesn't happen, is that 
even if I'm talking about what's important to me and she's talking about what's important to her, we're really mm -hmm. trying to find fulfilling ways of communicating. We may have, I, it may be different. What's fulfilling for me may be different from what's fulfilling for her, okay? Mm -hmm. So how do you really communicate? What is, what is nonviolent communication in the context of a relationship? And how can people who are coming from different places get, achieve intimacy? All right, well, Kelly and I, we were talking about this briefly, right, before the show. And nonviolent communication is an idea that was developed by Marshall Rosenberg. And what it's about, it's saying that, you know, going back to what you're saying, some of it is true that we are socialized in certain ways. And men have been socialized uh, in this culture to believe that they have certain roles in a relationship. However, we are all free human beings and we have a choice whether we want to live out that role or not. But when it comes to responsibility, you are responsible and you are, you are a free person and you make choices in every moment in what you choose to do. And you will decide whether you want, um, you, you are responsible for your actions. You're responsible for whether you choose to leave yourself vulnerable or not. You have, and if somebody wants something from you, if you have a partner that wants something from you, you are not responsible for meeting that person's needs. And is it in order so to, if you in order tell to yourself you have to meet that partner's needs, that's where the problems start to develop. Well, I might want to meet her needs, but if, in order for intimacy to be established, do I not have to be willing to be completely open and honest, even if that's going to lead to conflict? I mean, is there a time when in a relationship you say, in order to avoid the conflict, it's it, out of a loving thing. I won't be honest. I won't talk. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that? Yeah. I think your original question to us, which is, are women oh, even aware of the lack of safety men feel? Yes, like, that was the you question. Know, you know, I I don't think women are aware. I've only learned this within the last you know a couple of years myself, and I also have relationships with people now where. My girlfriends are now talking, it's a regular part of our conversation, you know, I'm creating safe space for this man in my life. It's, it's completely true. Is it difficult to do it's, for you as a woman to go to, to create, create the safe, safe space, space for him? No, it's not. It's, it's not now. But I will say that, you know, women are more, um, can be more emotionally tumultuous. You know, women can be more um, like tornado-ish and hurricane-ish. And if that is what is creating a lack of safety, if a man is afraid of that response, he might consider responding to that woman as though he were doing battle. And the, and the masculine energy is to face death. And you go out into the work world and you face the battles. You face, you make the kill at work. You know, you face life and you take life on and you, uh, you, know, you accomplish things. And if, if a man were to approach his relationship with this woman as though, okay, I'm going to face whatever energy is coming with me and handle it with grace and humor and love, then that could be his piece of it. And yeah, but what you said is really fascinating, because on the one hand, you're breaking free from traditional stereotypes. Mm -hmm. you, were, you were making me, I was feeling safe just sitting here listening <laughs> to you. And then suddenly you said, but you're going into battle. <laughs> Get ready to go into battle. And suddenly the safety right. net just it collapsed. Right. I mean, I don't want to go into battle. Well, mm -hmm. do you want, do you want, I want women to be, able to be just share. like men? No, but I, I, what I want is, is for honest sharing. And I think one of the problems is that we may want different things and that's why it becomes difficult to share honestly because we don't necessarily start with the same premises. Uh, I, I want to spend some time if I can talking about what happens when all right, communication fails, it breaks down and people who loved each other now wind up hurting each other. Okay, And I think this is a culture that deals with violence violently. You know, we arrest people and maybe there's a time when you have to arrest someone who's being an abusive in a relationship. I'm coming at this from the view that violence in a relationship begets violence and a loving gesture will almost always yield a loving response. And I'm particularly interested in how therapy can be helpful when a relationship has become abusive. Do you need to rely on judicial intervention or can the therapist help an abuser to recover the love that was in the relationship? Let me ask Dr. Schiffler first. Well, I think first whether a therapist can help will be dependent upon whether the person they're working with feels empowered to change the relationship that they're in. So if you're working with, say, what you might call the offender, if you're working with someone who has been violent, if that person feels empowered to change the relationship, then you can be effective. And in order to do that, what you would want to do is you'd want to work with that person to raise their awareness, to raise their awareness to the fact that it is true that, uh, that people are socialized in a certain way, and that in relationships, typically, there's a struggle for power, whether people acknowledge it or not. 
and that both the partners are struggling for power and security in that relationship. And usually